what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! One in front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. <laughs> Princey fella. Uh, what's going on, my man? We shuffled the deck here a little bit today at Missing Curfew. Uh, we got Princey zooming in from Calgary, Alberta. He's got his opportunity here. Uh, probably stick you in front of the net, eh? Princey on the power play, stick you in front of the net, screen the goalie. Do you think he'd tip a few? Yeah, I mean, the the fellas all back home, they all joke that my number one trade is kind of like yours was. It was high and hard off the glass, stand in front of the net, screen the goalie. You know, be a good guy. Hand out the beers in the locker room. That's I know my role, man. I know my role. I'm here. I'm happy. I'd be a little more happy if we were closer to the season. You know, I feel like this summer's been a little long, but um, you know, I'm ready for some hockey, man. I'm, I'm I'll be excited for preseason hockey. Let's be yeah, excited. listen, we, you definitely wouldn't be working the, the the you wouldn't be the QB on the power play. That's okay. Though. I mean, listen, we're we're gonna get into your we're gonna get into your off season. Uh, what what you didn't pee? I and we're gonna get into your workout routine. I got a couple oh, questions yeah. for you too. So, <laughs> sure. and then we got in the booth. Uh, Kyle Conway, fella, how you doing back there? Play, well, Kyle, I'm going to probably stick you on the wing, right? I think you can get up and down the wing, good on the walls, chip it in, go get it, eh? Oh, fella, the wing's perfect. I'll just, you know, I'll tip the puck right off my skate, right off the boards. It'll be perfect. Yeah, exactly. So it's good to be back here. And Morgan, we got Morgan back there. Hi to Morgan. Uh, it's good to be back at Princey, like you said, fella. I was talking to Kyle here while we were getting started, and, you know, it has been a long summer, but, you know, we're still what? three weeks away from any kind of exhibition games. And listen, I love watching hockey, but unless McDavid or someone McKinnon's yeah. playing, I draw the line of preseason hockey. Like we're still, we're still over a month away from regular season hockey. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to find some stuff to chat about fella. Well, we get kind of like this little small hype tease of like the guys like me that are just dying for hockey. You know, those old tournaments they used to have in like Traverse city and like my crew here in Alberta, they go to Penticton, which is awesome, but it's just all the prospects. But I do remember back in the day, you you get to watch, you know, the Flames draft Matthew Goodchuck. He's thrown in there right away. I don't think McDavid played there, but you get to see your first round picks. You get excited for like one game, then it's like, okay, yeah, these are just a bunch of rookies. And then the preseason gets going. So we're we're getting close, man. We're, we're getting close. We're kind of at the end of the dog days here where not a lot's happening. I mean, there's been a couple things happening. You're probably going to start seeing some guys signing some one-year deals, you know, some PTOs, that kind of stuff. But we're, we're just so damn close, man. I, I just can't wait. I'll, t- I'll tell you what a lot of guys are doing right now. They're waiting for their fucking agent to call them, being like, I, did I have did yes. I have that bad of a year? Did I, I I didn't have that bad of a year. What I you know, fuck, I was minus five, whatever. Though I play hard, I'm a good teammate. Like, And we're going to get into some of the guys that are left. There's some quality players, but I've been in that situation where right now, you know, you're cranking up your workouts. You, you got, you, you, you know, guys that have contracts are getting ready to head back to their cities. Most of the guys now are already back in their cities, right? Like I saw Matt oh, yeah. in Toronto. A lot of guys are already back. And for some guys out there that are just trying to train and don't know where they're going, fellas, it's it's a tough, tough situation for veteran guys right now. So as much as guys are licking their chops, getting new condos, buying new houses, spending some of that bread that they got in July, there's also guys out there being like, fuck, where do I fit in? And as you, if you look around the league, Prince and Kyle, like you boys know, you look around right now, there's not a whole lot of spots. You know what I mean? No, no. We've got uh, – we'll get to it a little bit later. we got a list. There's still some decent players out there. There's a handful of guys that I, I think are going to get one-year deals. But we're just looking at PTOs here, fellas. We're looking at PTOs that you're all too familiar with, whether that's you're just brought in to – you know, whether you're the, the jester or the clown to, to make the guys laugh at training camp or you're actually fighting for a job. You know, like, yeah, like you said, there's guys that are waiting. And, like, you look at it. I'm, I'm relating back to my Flames years there. You know, a guy like Erica Branson, he signed, I think, like mid September, like right before. So you're still, you might be able to add some pieces in there. Teams also might be able to look into offload guys, too. There's still a bunch of teams out there that have heavy, heavy cap space to use. You know, we're kind of looking yeah. at that Montreal like line, eh? So, like so make, yeah. So you might look at, there might be some teams that still want to make some moves that are tied up against the cap that are willing to send a pick to a team to free up some cap space to maybe make a larger deal. It's all just going to happen. It's all just got, we just got to be patient. That's all. Wow, we look, be patient. look at GM Princey here, eh? What do you got? You got the fucking <laughs> analytics right up there on your screen or what? <laughs> For a job or what? What? His ducks can use you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I know a little bit about hockey from my years in this curfew. Just a Kyle, little. the ducks are $1 million over the floor, fella. They are at $65 million, I believe, right now. They got like 
21 million in cap space. I know they were in on Stammer, but I, I like to see Verbeek and the Samuel Williams get off their wall a little bit here. No, like you got to spend a little bit more than that. I know they're I trying to lose, but bad for some of the boys, like what does that say about, you know, what do they think of the team? Like you're not bringing anyone in for help, you know? Totally. It's like, well, and, and the thing goes, right? I, I heard Bill Belichick on Pat McAfee, I believe it was yesterday morning, talking about Massachusetts. They called it tax Massachusetts, like, because you had to pay so much tax there. It's like, I'd have to deal with these, you know, agents, and then we got to pay more tax. And that's something that Anaheim out here is, is, is battling, too. Like, guys are like, why would I come out there where you're going to fucking tax me through the ass? And I'm oh, like, yeah. well, you get to live in Newport Beach. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a luxury tax to live out here. It's fucking perfect out here live in ohio in like a fucking palace yeah you know no that that's true but uh we, we will get into some of those guys that are still out there and if you're a veteran gm out there give these guys a one-year deal like don't make them come in on pto respect the veterans but uh first and foremost princey hell of a job this off season fella you hey. fucking love the mail <laughs> um and you know what shout out to morgan and kyle for banking those curfew calls for us and the curfew campfires sticking around longer in the studio on days where there were some long days there where we're in here for three or four hours. So thank you guys, but they were unbelievable. But first and foremost, how was PEI, Princey? Uh, I went there back in the day with my boy, Craig Foster. Fuck, did I have a time there? PEI is a, a very cool place, a very interesting place for me coming from Alberta. Uh, I go to PEI. I've gone there two summers now. Uh, one of my best friends, Brody Irving, he moved out there about six or seven years ago. He's got family, all his family out there. Um, and we just constantly get to hear about it all year. It's unbelievable. I left the wife and kids behind. We know that uh, when you're when you're a young dad, you just need and, and you and you work as much as I do. You just need a little bit of a break and a little bit of release. So went down to PEI with the fellas. Uh, it was a full on golf trip, boys. Now, like I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not golfing at Big Man, Canyon. You, say, you say you need a little bit of a release. That means you just want to jerk off a bunch of stuff. Or what, what, does that, what does that mean? You want a little release? It always, I guess, so. it always comes back to that with me. That's what you guys is labeled as me, labeled as me at. Um, yeah, like, uh, uh, you know, I'm not golfing Big Canyon. I live in Airdrie, Alberta, just outside of Calgary. I'm golfing the local country clubs, but we just go and have a blast with the fellas. I did get to golf um, a place called Crowbush. Which, if the if the 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 maritime listeners out there know that that's a top ten course out in Canada, right by the ocean, unbelievable. You know, I can't say that I I broke a hundred, but uh, I had a good time. More point, how many beers did you have? What were you drinking on the course? Beers, whiskey. I know I was drinking. I was there? drinking drinking beers, and then the big thing out there is these things called Collide and Tides. They're 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 these hard seltzers. Um, you know, they're not unfortunately don't have a whole lot of Labatt Blue out there. But I was kind of going yeah, more of the seltzers. Of like. If you're if you're a guy like me and a guy like you, it takes a lot of beers to to even feel something. So it's kind of you got to kind of switch it up a little bit here and there. But uh, to be able to go and golf that much, um, one of my one of my buddies is just an absolute scratch golfer. His name's Brandon Cubit. He runs New Nine Golf on Instagram. So golfing with him is a little bit tricky, uh, just because he's such a pro out there. But uh, yeah, to go go and do some bar hopping, you know, I did get I wear my missing curfew swag all the time. You know, I'm not on the show as much, but it's still nice to get picked out. You know, when I'm going down to the bars there, it's still kind of get nice to get picked out by a few people oh, here yeah. saying, Princey fella, what's going on? What are you doing out here? You know, that kind of stuff. But uh, you're, the, you're, you're maybe not on the show all the time, but you're yeah. talking about the show all the time. Yeah, exactly. So if okay. you guys can still recognize my face, it's good. Anytime we go on a fellow tour, everyone recognizes you just as much as everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, know, I, know. I know. I remember when you met John Cooper in Vegas. We <laughs> oh, were, were there for the files and yeah. Cooper, like, is this Princey? Yeah, uh, I know. That, that's going to be a pretty good moment for for Mark Prince right there. Yeah, the biggest legend, the head yeah. of Team Canada now is like yeah. is Princey. Fuck, nice to meet you, buddy. Oh, I know that. That's if you put up my missing curfew moments. That's probably number one. And just you know how nice and respectful he was. He was joking around, and I don't remember what I did, but it, he put me in the penalty box for some reason too. Yeah, he yeah. Go, he, said, he made me go sit in the corner for yeah, some reason. Did. But I think that was just, that was just him poking the rookie and having fun. But uh, you know, Coop's been you know the many times that we've met him, he's been nothing but great to me. And he asked about my family and you know my story about missing curfew, which is which is completely awesome. Another great thing about that trip was when uh, Kyle were sitting there and Gretz is telling stories, and that Prince has got his phone out and Wayne, he looks at him like Princey, oh, get pictures to record this, are you? Oh my God. No, no, no. No, no, oh wait, I would God. never do that. I would oh, never my do that. God. I just about crawled oh, in a hole. You would do that. 
Oh my god! And that was like when we first met Gretzky too. He introduced himself as Wayne. He's like, "Hello, I'm Wayne." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I, I know who you are." But yeah, you know that's that's kind of a cardinal rule. Like I I, I consider myself a professional. When we get put into these situations that uh, fella tours and trips on missing curfew, there's a time and place for your phone. And that was not the time for a phone. And I just happened to transfer it between my hands. And he thought I was filming. Me. I thought he was filming me. And it, it was just, you know, I think he was just giving you shit like Koopa. I think he was. I think I mean, he how was. Great is, how great of a story is that for you to tell your boys back? That's what tell. It. Yeah, I know. And like, that, that's the thing is like. Uh, I'm telling exactly. them that I'm with Wayne Gretzky. He just he just kind of bugged me and said, "Are you filming me?" I can't take a picture. And, like send it to the boys. And be like, hey, I'm with I'm with Gretzky. So, sure. but, yeah, he sure. But they all believe me. They they've seen it. All my friends, you know, in the group chat. I got back at home. They see everything, and they're they're probably my uh, second to my wife. They're my biggest supporters. So it's awesome. So listen, did did you stay right in Charlottetown? Because I went to, I went out to Charlottetown years ago. Shout out to my boy Craig Foster, who I played junior hockey with in St. Mike's. He was going to the University of PEI at the time, and I came out for the summer, for a summer trip. Sorry, and I stayed there for at least a week, maybe maybe ten days. And by the end of my week to ten days, I felt like I knew the whole fucking town. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the same bar. Yep. Same the people. They're all they're all so amazing. Amazing people. Uh, lots of beautiful women out there on the island too, but good, genuine people that all they want to do is get banged up. I was like, this feels like home, man. I was like, I don't want to leave Fozzie. I feel like I'm going to have to buy some real estate here in Charlottetown. Did you have that same kind of feel? I do, man. It's my second year out there. The first year I brought my family. So it was a little bit more of a family trip. This trip was just me and the boys, but no, I didn't stay in Charlottetown. Just, uh, I just stayed outside of a town called Cornwall. Um, we just rented a couple cabins. There was a bunch of us there. Um, a couple of my buddies brought their parents out there too. So it was just a big giant group. We had three cabins out there just going in between the cabins. It was right on the ocean. So I'd go sit there, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I'd go sit there and just stare off into the ocean, contemplating my, my life and thinking about missing curfew and thinking about my kids and, and that kind of stuff. But you are right. Um, all the golf courses that we went to, there was ones that were hours away. You're going to one end of the island to the other, over to the other side and back. You've basically seen the whole thing. Um, it's an unbelievable place. Now, I have heard the winters are a little tough out there. You're right by the ocean, lots of snowstorms. And the biggest reason I, I couldn't live in PEI is the time change. So you got your Hockey Night in Canada games. So many Leafs fans out there because those games start at 8 o'clock their time. So if you're a Flames fan, you're not tuning in till 11 o'clock. Like my buddy, we just riz the shit out of him because he he can only make the first period because it's the it's midnight. It's the second period already. So that would be my one drawback. I can't I do. You wouldn't that. be a Flames fan growing up out there though. You would have cheered for the Habs or the Leafs. So you I'm always a Flames fan. I'll never not be a Flames fan. Well, I'm saying if you grew up in PEI, <laughs> yeah. yeah. if you moved to PEI, you'd have to yeah. stay up late for the games. But no, you're not. Yeah. You're not going to move there because you're too far no, 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 in south. No. No, it's uh, it's cool. It's uh, it's it's definitely something that a lot of people I'd like for them to experience. And you know, I I I would like to, uh, you know, maybe we'll see next summer. Maybe uh, you know, Obi does his annual trip out to Ontario to the Muskokas. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe I'll fly in for a weekend and we'll we'll pick a bar or something like that, and we'll have a little meet and greet and something like that. Bring the franchise, Shane Taylor, and uh, a couple of the oldest fellows out there. That'd be that'd be pretty fun. Shout out to the franchise, uh, the franchise yeah. Jane Taylor. I sponsored this fastball Steve team called uh, Dirt Road Company. Another one of our buddies, Josh Krentz, that's his company. He sponsors them as well. Uh, they got nice new uniforms. Had missing curfew on the back. Anyways, like the franchise does, he built another winner. They went undefeated, won the tournament. Uh, good press for us. I, I, I said, yeah. Hey, oh yeah. If you, if you need my ring size, let me know. Eh, I'll send you my ring size. Send that baby in the mail. Be my first championship ring, but. Uh, I'll tell you what, that guy can build a fast fastball team. Do did, did, did they play fastball in Calgary? Is it a popular sport in Cowtown? I think it's more softball. Like, you get the beer league softball yeah, like out softball. there. So, yeah, it's a lot of beer league. But I, I was going to ask, like, what is, is is the franchise the GM or is he the back catcher? Like, what does he do? Uh, the franchise is definitely the GM. Uh, yeah. Um, and I, I think if they need a big clutch hit, he would right. come off the bench. He's like uh, Pablo. You know, you don't want him, you don't want him playing center field or you don't want him <laughs> up the middle. Uh, and I think if he had to stuff him anywhere defensively, you'd probably put him behind the dish or at one bag. Yeah. I think he's more of the GM coach. And then if it's if they need a clutch hit, you call the franchise in and yeah. see if you can get the bat speed up. Because I, I think if he gets a hold of it, he can, he, he's, he's a home run hitter. Yeah. Was, he's, it, yeah, but he just strikes out or he hits it over the goddamn canteen where the boys are <laughs> having hot dogs. 
There looked like there were some athletic guys. Not gonna lie, seeing those pictures, they looked like there were some guys that that looked like they're athletes or they're they're firemen or they're oil workers or whatever. So I was kind of like, I wonder where the franchise yeah, fits in all this. Exactly what they are. And yeah. I played baseball growing up, but in in, in Coburg especially, fastball is a, a very popular sport. Yeah. Shout out to Donks, who was on his team. He's an absolute beauty. Uh, Butsy was on his team, and then like you said, he gets a bunch of guys that are exactly that firemen, policemen, doing whatever, and they come in for the weekend and they. They, 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 they play their guts out. And for whatever reason, he always knows how to pick winners. And it was nice to attach Mission Curfew to it. So shout out yeah, to the franchise. Good. good win, fella. I need one of those jerseys franchise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Princey, last but not least for you here, I texted you the other day or I gave you a buzz. You said, Olbs, I'm going <laughs> to leave the gym. Yeah. And I hung up the phone and kept <laughs> Ivan. And I thought, what the fuck is his workout routine like? You know, like first of all, <laughs> I was like, what does he wear to the gym? Are you one of those guys that, because back home, there's a lot of guys that wear the track pants with the long sleeve shirt and they come in there and they do the curls for the girls and a couple chests and they don't really get going very much. Are you that guy? Or I like, talk me through a Mark Prince workout because I know you're doing fucking upper body guarantee. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody who's, who's met me in person knows that because uh, I, I'm pretty well aware that I have uh, a bit of a soft voice. So when I'm on the podcast... <laughs> I had a couple guys when we were at Greta Bar in Vancouver for the playoffs there come up to me and they were like, oh my God, I cannot believe how big you are. I thought that you were going to be like five foot 10, 175 pounds just based off your voice. Well, I'm not. I'm six foot four. I, I'm anywhere between 240, 245 pounds. I'm a big guy. So if you don't work out, it, 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 you pack it on. You pack it on. And the amount you've seen me, Obes, at the, at the, bel- at the bow bowl. At the Balboa Bay Club, you saw how many beers I can put down. So you got to you gotta take care of yourself. Now, in terms of what you're asking what I'm wearing, no, I'm not the full-on Under Armour, the gloves kind of guy. Okay, okay, okay. I'm all, and here's the thing. I'm always on brand, man. You know that. I'm always on brand. So whenever, you know, I get the old, the, the missing curfew swag from 2021, the sleeves get cut off, the old hat gets put on, I'm always on brand. Now, I'm not looking to get recognized, but you never know, man. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of young hockey players in Airdrie that are kicking around that have definitely given me the the up and down, and then they, they see him in the corner whispering, pointing. They So they're, you know, hey, it's maybe that's the guy from Missing Curfew. So I'm always on brand. Well, but, first, wait, did, did you say you cut the sleeves off? You go in there? Of course I cut the sleeves off, yes. Wow, the that's off. impressive yeah. play. No I, got, I got the arms. You guys do know I'm covered up right now. I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got a sleeve tattoo, so... Uh, yeah, okay, I cut I the sleeves off. off. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to show off there, but yeah, you know what I am? I'm an upper body guy. I'm a back, thighs, yeah. chest, all that kind of stuff. Of core. You getting any core in there? You getting, I, tr- there? I try to, man. I try to, like I, 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 I hop on, <laughs> I try to, yeah. go. so I hop on the bike for 20 minutes at the start, get a little warm up and get the arms going, hit the chest really hard. I got really good triceps. I like doing my triceps, <laughs> but the, the biggest, the biggest thing for me is, um, it's just, you know, anybody that does this, I, I'm very fortunate that, um, you know, as, as much as I do pretty much work the minute I wake up, the minute I go to bed, I'm at home. So I, I need a little bit of a, just a little bit of a break here. I know I got, I got a busy schedule with kids and a wife and, you know, being the man of the house and missing curfew. So it's nice to just go in there for an hour and a half, you know, try to listen to a different podcast, whether that was, I was listening to a lot of like 32 thoughts before whatever happened to that. You know, just to try to get a little bit more NHL information that way. Switch it up a little bit. Listen to some some McAfee, the Kelsey brothers, that kind of stuff too. You know, and then maybe switch it up. You know, listen to my classic rock, my tragically hip. I love listening to the hip. I love Led Zeppelin, ACDC, all that kind of stuff. So, yes, you have called me a lot and I haven't answered because I'm always at the gym. Whatever. it's You guys always call me and I'm always at the gym. What time do you work out at? Like, listen, if I, I get up, mm-hmm. I get my swim in. Like our boy Kyle in the back is like, you know, Kyle, he's a beauty. He's working two jobs. He texted me earlier in the week. He said, oh, I'm ready to rock at 8 a.m. Yeah. I was like, Kyle, I am not ready to rock at 8 a.m. I'm <laughs> hardly out of the wrapper then. But I got to get my swim in and get going right in the morning. If I, I know that. In the morning, I'm probably not going to get it in. When, when, do you, when do you get to the gym? Are you an afternoon guy? If we're not if we're not recording like uh, like we are today, um, I'm up in the morning with my kids. That's, that's always the first priority is up in the morning with the kids. So I'm up early, get the kids to school. Then I got to do some work, man. You know, I got to set my day up. I got to get the clips ready. I got to make sure that our sponsor's in line. I got to make sure that I've got, you know, some stuff throughout the day. So I like to sit at the computer, get my stuff ready. So I'm usually like a 10, 10 30 kind of guy. Try to get it done by noon so I can get back, get a meal in, and then get right back to work. I don't like to mess around. I'm not an evening guy either, um, especially during the season too, just there's so many hockey games on. So I like to get it done before noon. We'll say before noon. 
I would say the only good thing about working out like at night is you probably have a lot more chance of seeing some hot chicks in this, right? Because they're done working, right? They work all day. You know, they probably don't want to get up before work because it's like you got to get up at seven and get your workout in, right? Only the dedicated, you know, people do that. I think that the only benefit to going in there after would be, I know you're married, you're not going in there, but I'm just spitballing. <laughs> I'll just spitball with you, Princey. Well, we're talking to the fans here. We're talking to the fans. I'm sure the boys would agree with me. And boys, if I'm wrong, let me know. But if you're a single guy, I think you're probably going in there after dinner, seeing what's in there. You know, that's a good place to probably meet a chick, right? If, you, if you're not going to meet a girl at a bar, you know, maybe you meet her at the gym. Maybe you go in there for, for the late night shift and you, you bump into her. But I'm sure a lot of girls, too, they get in there, they don't want to be talked to, right? They just want to get in yeah. there. Like, get out of here. I was yeah. the guy that, of all my years, I would never really go up and talk to a, to a girl at a gym. I never found it, like, because they have their AirPods in. It's hard to be like, hey, like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey good job there. But, like, there was always girls in there after hours, I'm saying. Yeah, if I knew them, if you knew them, it's easier to talk to them. It's a little harder to go up and talk to them, but I, you know, I I agree, I agree wholeheartedly with that one. That's probably a good time, but but it also, you know, that's when the that's when the high school boys are in there. You know, all the yeah. hockey boys all there with their flipped hair and their their yeah, they're all in there. You know, five of them standing around one machine or five of them occupying one area. So I'm all business, man. Get in and get out. I got too much stuff throughout the day to do so. In and I'll out. Tell you, I'll tell you what. I like the structure, buddy. I like the structure. I like that you got a little game plan each day. That's that's a recipe for success. You hear Joe Rogan talk about it. Like he doesn't do a podcast without doing a cold tub and a workout and this and that. And for me, like I'm the same way. You got to get a workout in. You got to get some kind of a mental sweat going, and it helps you get in here and get your day going. So uh, I don't know if I love the cut off sleeves. I'm not gonna lie to you, fella. If I see you with cut off sleeves, I'll probably lay India at the gym. But hey, <laughs> each their own, hey, fella. It's each their own. Yeah, uh, Kyle, my man, welcome back. Uh, how was your summer, fella? I, I, we were texting a little bit, but I, I, I didn't really. Did you, did you have a relaxing summer? Did you travel? What'd you get up to, fella? Yeah, fella, it was good. Yeah, we hit each other up. That was nice to hear from you throughout the summer. But uh, we kept it local. I did a lot of local. You know, we're lucky out here. You know, I did Napa. I went up to Napa. Did some wine tasting. Yeah, I nice. did a little Palm Springs trip. I know you love it out there, Obes. Um, did a little Catalina Island trip, just all local kind of stuff. Um, I have to say, I think my highlight, I did a chili cooking contest, chili open down at the class of 47 in Newport. Oh, there you go. That's Rodman's old bar. Oh yeah. 20 different chilies. This is my first time oh, to chili cook off. And break out the fucking Pepto-Bismol and the Tom's oh, A. 20 sure. different well, types of chilies. Are we going to kill people today or? <laughs> good, you know? But we fucking won. We won the chili contest. Wow. Uh, it was, it was. It was over the like. It was right after Fourth of July, so it was prime summer, and it was a really, really fun time. But yeah, it was a great summer, and happy to be back with you guys. So cool. So Kyle, let's talk chili here for a second. Did you have to eat every single chili, or people were testing your chili? Yeah. So we set up with like the twenty other chilies, and there were like two hundred people there that like bought tickets to just come and try the chilies. Okay. And- it was kind of like I had a little salesman kind of like, you know, act going like, you know, we got this, we got that, we got coffee in here, we got chocolate in here, you got to come try it, it's different, and and uh, maybe that's why we won the fan vote, but, you know, we did we did short ribs, we did coffee and chocolate and like poblano peppers and all sorts of good shit, and we ended up winning, and, and uh, I didn't hear any complaints, you know, days later, no one got sick, and it was all good. <laughs> I mean, there's some people at home that night and was not pretty. I can guarantee you that. If you go take in the chili contest, see 20 things of chili, I'm guarantee you that's a long night that, that night at home. You're, you're not sleeping great. Oh, no. But, but, so you put all that in one chili or you had diff, you had like a short no. rib chili, then you had different kinds. No, one, one chili. And wow. It's funny because we were next to a few other chilies at the same table and we all tried each other's, you know. Some were sweet, some were, every, everyone had a different chili and ours was just sort of, Lots of beer, lots of like deep flavor, and it was just everyone was like, "Whoa, this is totally different!" And uh, we took home the prize. I was shocked. We were outside when they did the announcing when they announced the winners. We were outside sitting around drinking because so we didn't think we were going to win. And some old lady ran out, "Hey, table table forty six, table forty six, you guys won." We're like, "What the fuck?" Like, no, we didn't. Uh, put it, so it was put it on the resume. Night on the peninsula that night, we stayed out all night, all night celebrating. It was pretty, it was pretty. It was like we won the cup that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good for you, buddy. The class of forty seven, Princey's old school Rodman bar, uh, down in the fun zone, right, Kyle? Down like all the way down the fun zone, where A Hall has his arcade and stuff. But Rodman used to own this bar. It was just a, the place oh, yeah, to the place to be back in the day. Back. Yeah, this is where John Wayne 
literally John Wayne no way. you know, at this bar and his apartment was like right across the street. So it has got a lot of history and now we got Dennis Rodman there all the time and it's a, it's a cool little bar. Well, there you go. Put it on the missing curfew resume. We got a chili contest on it. We, 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 we won the, we won the fast pitch tournament in Cobra and Grafton, Ontario, and we won the chili contest at the class of 47. So it's good off season for the boys here. Kyle, before we move on, you're talking a little fantasy football. Uh, I got my draft with Larry Bettman on Monday night. The entry fee is getting just out of control. Oh. I'm like, fellas, like, I'm not even going to say what it is. It's fucking embarrassing. Like, who are we kidding? It's fantasy football. Um, you have the sixth pick overall. You've talked to me about Jamar Chase. Fella, he's not signed yet. He hasn't practiced yet. That doesn't scare you? Well, well, well what do you think of that six there, bud? It does. It does. But all, all, the, all the pros, everyone's telling me. Everyone's telling me, take Jamar Chase. And I've been saying the same thing back. Like, well, the guy's not even on a team. Like, what do we yeah. do? So I got Justin Jefferson in my back pocket. He's always a good. He's always a good pick. Let, six. let me ask you there. It's ab- an absolute bummer that that JJ McCarthy got hurt in his first preseason game for the Vikings because he was absolutely he had an unbelievable preseason game. I know it's preseason, but sucks he's out for the year now. Does the Sam Darnold being the, the the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings scare you off Jefferson at all, or you think Jefferson's good enough? Doesn't matter. I mean, I could throw the ball to that guy, right? I mean, you're blowing you're blowing up my draft. Yeah, you're totally right. You got to keep an eye out. They don't have a core like that. Sam Darnold, you know, former USC guy, but like, I don't know. I would be, I would tread carefully. I'm just, I'm like, again, I'm just spitballing with you. I'm going through my head of guys that I'm going to take. Like, I don't know. All, all the pens. Six a pretty good pick, though, right? Right. In the, how many guys in your in your draft? Uh, there's ten of us. And yeah, yeah, so you're perfect. You're good. Back, it's a snake draft. Coming back around, and I got like Amon Ross, St. Brown, right there. Jonathan Taylor. You know, there's. Maybe Tyreek Hill drops. I doubt it, but six is six is a decent spot. Yeah, I like that. If I get six of mine, I'll be happy with it. I, I would do some research, fella, but good luck to your fantasy football. We'll talk about that all season. Sticking with football real quick, we're going to talk a little bit more about it as we go on here, but hard knocks. Prince, you probably don't – you get hard knocks up yeah. back in the homeland? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can get Listen, every year we, we call it getting hard knocked. Like, they make the team look so good. You're like, this team's unbelievable. Like, uh, but I'll tell you what, this Caleb Williams looks like the real deal, boys. Um, the Bears' defense is absolutely nasty. I just can't get behind the quarterback. I don't know why. I mean, he looks unbelievable. Dude, I was the same way. Like, when he was at USC, and his last game or his last couple games, he's sitting there on the on the sideline crying because it wasn't going his way. I'm like, dude, if you're going to cry, do it like the rest of us. Go in the dressing room and be a man and cry in your stall by yourself. Like, we all do when we lose out of the Stanley Cup playoffs or when the season's over. Don't cry on the sidelines. But... The one thing I haven't liked about Hard Knocks is he always has his fucking phone in his hand. Everywhere he's going, he's in his meetings, he's talking to his guys, he's got his phone in his hand. I guess I can't chirp because I kind of did now, but I'm not playing in the NFL and I'm not trying to be a fucking quarterback. Put your phone away, dude. Attic. Just Yeah, unless I'm sure he's texting chicks or, or, or girls. I'm sure he is. So I'm going to give him some, I'm going to cut him some slack for that. But he looks good, man. He's He's done some stuff. Like I'm a huge fan of, of, of a part of my take with, with Big Cat. And, and obviously, Big Cat's a diehard Bears fan. And he interviewed him during training camp. And it was funny. He started off. He's like, I, I don't want to say I love you because I just met you. And that's kind of weird. But uh, I, I think I love you, Caleb. And he's like, you're the savior of this team. But he's doing stuff like Patty Mahomes is doing, Kyle. Like, he's he's rolling out to his outside. He's making those little flip plays. I'm like, I'm no John Madden when it comes to football. But the stuff he's done. Kyle, it has a little Patty Mahomes to it, man. Yeah, he looks sick. And I listen, I went to school in the Midwest. I went to Mizzou, and all my buddies are from Chicago, and they are losing their minds. They are so excited for the season. And I'm always the devil's advocate over here. Like, ah, he paints his nails. He cries. Yeah, I know. It's not going to work, but I'm not going to lie. He looks pretty good. He does. No, but listen, you have a you have a very valid point, dude. He's a little bit soft, I would say, right? Like, so we'll see. When they start bringing those blitz start of like the whole next generation, our whole there could be a whole generation of football players that act and look like him. We don't know. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll give you guys a little DraftKings. Um, Coach Payton has never lost, has never won, eight, has never won fewer than eight games right now. And on DraftKings Sportsbook, I believe the over under for the Denver Broncos right now is either five and a half or six. Hey boys, I would hammer that on DraftKings. Mm-hmm. The over. Bo Nix looks unbelievable. Uh, Sean Payton is a quarterback guru. Great fucking guy, by the way, too. He's just an unbelievable dude. I've already bet that on DraftKings. Hammer the over on the Denver Broncos to win more than five and a half. I think it might have went up to six after this preseason because Bo Nix has looked so good. But check that out. 
Uh, last but not least, on a little intro here, curfew social media off season. Princey, fuck, it feels like we're just blowing Princey here on the show. <laughs> no, here, Kyle. But dude, you killed it. And what you did the best of is you just brought the rock'em sock'em. Oh, I yeah. brought it. You just brought it heavy rock'em sock'em. I was at Richardson's wedding. Shout out to Brad Richardson and now his beautiful wife Jessica Richardson. Uh, what a wedding! Uh, shout out to my boy Jason Aprika. Derek Smith, who played for the Flames, one of yeah. my teammates, yeah. He's the head coach of, they're called the Trenton Golden Hawks now. Yeah. They the Trenton Sting. Stoli, Teddy, Greener. It was an unbelievable wedding. But you know how many comments I had of, hey, man, I love your guys' social media with the rock and sock and stuff. I said, listen, boys, I tell Princey to hammer it. He loves grapes. So, dude, it was unbelievable. Like, I would just send it over to Lupo. I'd be like, dude, enjoy this. Listen <laughs> to this shit. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the the compliments and you know how hard I work on the social media and you know the the fans are number one, but uh I, I am well aware, um, and I, I've heard it before about uh how much missing curfew is viewed in NHL locker rooms and uh with the alumni, with your ex teammates and stuff like that. So um if the fans might not if the fans think there might be too much rock and sock and whatever oh, you know i'm kind of tailoring to some of our guys I'm right now yeah. i'm telling you right now anybody listening to mr curfew will never say there's too much rock and yeah sock. yeah I'm telling you what that clip you put up of dougie um, dougie Gilmore. <laughs> yeah I, I i i dm'd him i'm like killer this is fucking great he's like yeah that, we were in london we were in london for- yeah i saw the flag in the background yeah yeah. Come over, he's like, get that fucking camera out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. And the the one, I, I found it late night. You go down these rabbit holes on the internet oh, and you I find these that. things. You find these things on page 16 of Google. And I found that clip of Messier skating over to, and the fans picked it out right away, Rick Tabaracci saying, if you wave <laughs> that stick in my face one more fucking time, you're going to fucking eat it. I guarantee it. And that, as soon as I found that, I was like, oh my God, I can't hold on to this for too long. I got to get it out there. Rick so, Tabaracci. Uh, we yeah. Just, blame. And then about paying your tab. You're like, hey, hey, Tabaracci. don't forget to pay the Rick Tabaracci, eh, boys? Or, hey, <laughs> who picked up the old Rick Tabaracci there, fella? That's I'll a good the, one. I'll get the next one. I remember uh, the tabby cat from the flames. Yeah. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Thank you to you beauties out there. The curfew calls. Um, the curfew campfire, which is something we came up with, but Princey gave us all the bullet points to go through. But the curfew calls, fellas, they're unbelievable. Um, we want more of them. We need more of them. We need we need some in-season curfew calls. We need some yeah. off-season curfew calls. You can go to missingcurfew.com. It's right there. Call in, boys. We want to hear from you. Yeah. There, there is no missing curfew without you guys. It was unbelievable. Princey killed it. However, I will say this. We record these curfew calls as the season goes on, right? We try to keep <laughs> yeah. evergreen for the boys. Sometimes I say some shit that I forgot I fucking said. I know, yeah. And I'll tell you what. Shout out to my beautiful girlfriend, Matt Miller. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Princey. Week one and two of curfew calls, she was not a happy oh. camper, bro. They were coming out left, right, and center. I text you on the side. I'm like, dude. I know, I know. About <laughs> me just talking about girls back in the day. I'm like, so I had to pull her aside and say, listen, Matt Miller, this was, this was years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the curfew calls is a locker room mentality. You know, we're just giving you, I'm like, we're just giving our listeners a sneak peek of sitting in the room with the boys. So pretend earmuffs, I said, earmuffs, I earmuffs, know. Matt Miller. But <laughs> thank God it, it died off a bit, Princey, because the first couple of weeks I was dodging bullets left, right, and center, man. I was like, Jesus, old, you said that, you're a fucking meat stick. Yeah, I know. I uh, listen to some of these, and yeah, a little insight to the fans. That yeah, we do record these throughout the season, and uh, this season we'll do a better job of outlining that. Hey, we're going to be doing a curfew calls. We need summer questions. This one is going to air in the summertime because we do get a lot of guys. You know, they wanted to know about you know the the Morgan Riley cross check on Ridley Gregg, but we weren't airing that till the summer, so we couldn't quite do that. But um, going through the ed- episodes and editing them, your uh, your beautiful girlfriend definitely came to my mind, and I was like. Oh can't do this and i cut out oh, i cut out a bunch of stuff but then there was some to. clips where i was like okay i'm like i might have to like dm her myself and apologize but <laughs> like, listen listen mac i'm doing this for the views girl you got to understand that that's all i care about is the views and i know it's gonna happen so i gotta do it so um she, she yeah. loves what you do for mr curfew she's yeah up your tires because she knows social media right she's in, yeah she, she does world yeah. when she lived in la yeah but it's funny some of the boys that listen to mr curfew We'll slide into Mac Miller's DMs and say, like, 
a lot of them stick up for me like hey Holmes is such a great guy yeah I'm, I know you know not too many of them are just you know chirping me but uh yeah nah she she loves it she understands it but and we were in Europe and I was like you know I, I was like hey sorry about that you know it's just you know old old time it's old time yeah. but uh listen the curfew calls are great like Princey said keep them coming uh, on our webpage, missingcurfew.com, fellas. Uh, without you listeners, there is no missing curfew. So uh, it was unbelievable. We will be right back at Missing Curfew. Welcome back, fellas, around the National Hockey League. Forgive us, fellas, because I know this a, a bunch of this stuff's a couple weeks old. Uh, however, we were on vacay enjoying the, the Southern Cali sun and, and then getting away from the game. But something, some stuff that we had to go over and, and give our two cents here at Missing Curfew. Uh, we're going to start with the Blues offer sheet. Um, obviously, we all know how it played out, Princey. You know, for me, listen, I, I, you know, they obviously bring Alex Steen in there as the assistant GM, grooming him to be the new GM. You want to make a splash. I love it. I love that Doug Armstrong said, I don't give a fuck if I'm going to piss off anyone. I'm going to come out here. I'm going to make my team better. But to me, a little bit, and this is no disrespect to Army. I mean, he's got one more Stanley Cup than I do. He's involved with Team Canada. Everybody that plays for him loves him for me princey and kyle it was it was a little bit of a a desperation move in my opinion right like okay to me when i when i look at their team they're still not a playoff team you know broberg for example listen is he, is he going to turn into be a great defenseman he's got all the tools right what is he six foot three big long can stay good stick played in the jungle last year played the entire fucking year in the jungle Came up and played, I believe, just in the finals, didn't he? Or Western Conference finals? Trinity, when did he get in? Dallas. He came in He came in Dallas, I think, West like game finals. Yeah, game four or five or something. He scored a goal, so yeah, I think he's going to in and out. I, I give him credit for coming in there and jumping in. It's hard to do. It's hard to sit around and get back skated all fucking playoffs, and then they'll be like, hey, you're in tonight. Two years at four and a half. Hey, listen, they overpaid to get him. We'll, we'll see. You know, they bring him in there. They got Ryan Suter in there. They got Justin Falk in there. They got Paranko. Uh, they got Letty. They got veteran guys that he can learn from around him. To, to me, it was just like, dude, you're overpaying this. I knew the Oilers couldn't match that. And when it comes to Dylan Holloway, two years at 2.29, listen, the kid can fly. You know, he's a third-line player, in my opinion, on a, on a on a average team. He's a fourth-liner on a, like we saw last year, on a team that goes to the Stanley Cup final. He has all the tools. I, I, I think he could be a good player, but to me, I don't mind the Holloway one, Princey, but to me, the Broberg one, for me, is too much dough right now. Yeah, I think you're kind of like, you look at it, it's like a two-year contract, so I guess you're trying to almost project what he's going to be, what he's going to turn into when the cap goes up. I know that they had put it at a set amount. If they, I think if they would have put it, uh, even I think it was like a dollar higher then they're, they would have got a lower draft pick or something like that. So that played a factor into what they were getting from Edmonton. They got a second and a third for Roberg and Holloway, so they didn't have to give up. I know that they had the the draft capital in, in that sense. So, yeah, I mean, like, if you're a team that's got cap, wh- why not? It, it's kind of cool, and I, I kind of want to see more teams try to do this, right? Like, oh, I'm, it's, down, I'm down for more offer sheets, Princey. I'm down. It's it's a business. It's the league. Like people are saying, oh, Doug, Ar- you know, Doug Armstrong. He's you know he wouldn't have done it if Ken Holland was there. Well, I don't I don't think that's true at all. Like you're you're trying to make your team better, and you really only gave up a second and a third. And we're looking at this series right now. Like Broberg, the guy was drafted ahead of Trevor Zegras. He was drafted ahead of Boldy, Caulfield, Newhook, Pinto. So he's obviously got something there. We just haven't seen it. He's only played 82 NHL games over a handful of seasons. Yeah, and that's and, the problem, yeah. that's the problem I have with it. That he's only putting yeah. games. He gave him four and a half bananas. Maybe it's jealousy. I am. Yeah. I can admit it. I'm fucking jealous. I'm jealous. Yeah. That he's got four and a half bananas. He's played 82 games in the league. It seems like the new thing now. They're throwing money at these guys who haven't really earned it yet. You know what? Yeah. It's. it's mm-hmm. But I will say, I mean, he's what 23, and, and Holloway's 22. If they can develop these guys the right way, they're both you know top 15 picks. Like this could lay a good future for the Blues if they can re-sign them after these two years. But. It was definitely an interesting move. Yeah, no, and, and Prince is right. They're young, and and maybe you know Army and Steiner are looking towards the future, right? Because to me, I don't know about you guys, but in the Central Division, I, I don't think the St. Louis Blues are going to be a playoff team this year. No. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Maybe it's a move for the future. But let's say, okay, let's say this guy does hit a home run. So it's he's already making four and a half. So his next contract, if he turns in the player right, he's going to be. Now you're looking at. You know, he's going to be, what, an $8 million defenseman? Yeah. Is that what they want? Is that what Army's hoping? Like, okay, listen, I give this guy four and a half. Hopefully, in two years, he's a top pair defenseman. I got to pay him eight to ten. Is that what he's thinking? Because you're not going to go back now. He's already making four and a half. 
So you got to hope that he hit a home run on him. Well, you got to kind of think that he's going to step in for some of these guys that, are, that potentially could be moving on. You've heard Pareko's name kind of thrown out there a couple times in trade rumors and stuff like that. So you know that you're going to move on from him. Tory Krug's got a bad injury. I don't even know if he's going to play at all this year. I'm not sure how long they have Falk, but you got to think you got to replace some of these guys, right? So that's where probably the, probably the money's going to come from on that aspect. Uh, Dylan Hallway, it's kind of cool. He's an Alberta kid. You know, they got Jake Neighbors as well. So they're trying to go maybe that little bit of that Western Canada route, get that grit. The Blues have always been known as a gritty team. Now you look at it on the flip side, though, is I think that Army probably looked at Edmonton and thought that I could attack them here because they're right up against the cap. Nobody knew how they were going to sign these guys. Like, how are they going to even sign these guys? And then you've got a new GM coming in, Stan Bowman. So this is the first thing that he has to deal with. It almost was almost like, how do you not do this? I had read somewhere that there were also other teams that were going to offer sheet both these players as well, too. And at the end of the day, people don't, maybe they don't realize, but the players are the ones that have to accept the offer sheets. They're, they're the ones that have to sign them, too. So it's not like you can just go, so, hey, hey, we're going to take you. The players have to agree to it, too. So Broberg probably thought he wasn't going to get an opportunity. Yeah, you're telling me the GMs around the league aren't feeling sorry for the Oilers, right? They're like, oh, God, God no. you got 97 and 29. Yeah. Fuck you. God, I'm, no. I'm throwing it off for she's God. got Broberg it all the way. I'm yeah. taking these two guys from you. Listen, I, I, it sounds like I pick on Jeff Skinner. I don't know this kid. He's played a 1,000 games. He's got a fucking gajillion dollars in his bank account. And he's probably a great kid. But, like, to me, when they signed Skinner, it put him in a situation that I was like, you know, why would you do that and put yourself right up against it? Like, I love the Arvidsson signing. Mm-hmm. They went out and got Paul Colson from Vancouver. We'll see what happens with that kid. You know, he hasn't quite found his game yet, but he has some size. He could be maybe a, be a good fourth liner with pairs. You know, I just thought the Jeff Skinner deal, when you look at it from the Oilers' perspective, like you said, Princey, kind of, kind of hamstrung him a bit, right? Put him right up against it. Like, hopefully Jeff Skinner proved me wrong. Listen. I, I can tell you right now, I'm gonna, I'm going to fucking pick the Edmonton Oilers to win the Stanley Cup. Sure. I'm going to put all my money on them at DraftKings, and I got a few other teams. But you know, you see videos of McDavid and Drysdale already training together, you know, a month ago or whatever it was. Like they're ready to rock. So maybe Skinner gets them over the top. And if they do, then it doesn't matter. But to me, that signing, I didn't love Princey. Yeah, and like, how do you think the players feel? Like, how do you, how do you think Dylan Holloway feels that the, he sees that they're bringing in these, you know, Jeff Skinner types that are going to take my spot? You know, maybe the Oilers, you know, he's only got 18 points in 89 games, just shy of 90 games or whatever. But, you know, if 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 they're willing to go give chances to guys like Jeff Skinner and they don't want to give a chance to me, I probably want to go to a place that wants me, right? You know, the, the St. Louis Blues are not the Edmonton Oilers, but you're going to get a better opportunity. He's probably going to get to play some power play time. You know, he's a very young player. He's not he's not 35 years old looking to chase a cop. It's a great fit for Broberg at Holloway. Not yeah. going to a team that just, you know, your Broberg just <laughs> Gave you, you know, half the keys to the city. You don't have the full key yet, but you can get an OB Clarks anywhere else you want to go. And, and you go in there, you know you're going to get an opportunity. It's a team that's kind of in a rebuild, but not really. Like you're, Retool. You're, uh, retool. Retool. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Retool. That a boy. It's mm-hmm. a great opportunity for those two guys. And like I said, Army, Steiner, I love it. I'm just giving my honest opinion, Princey and Kyle. I thought it was a little bit desperate, but hey, listen, desperate times call for desperate measures sometimes. And like you said, they're both young. They both... No, that's where they want to be. They both just went to the Stanley Cup final. So you bring in guys that have playoff experience at a young age. You know, Army knows what he's doing. Um, to me, we'll see how it plays out. But I love the offer sheets, boys. I wish there was more of them. If I was a GM, I'd be firing them out. Um, I, like Army said, it's, it's it's a business, right? So we'll see how it plays out. And then for the Oilers, Cody CC to San Jose, fucking good riddance, I would say. I would say to... Oilers fans probably say that. And for the San Jose Sharks, listen, say what you want about Cody CC. He's a National League defenseman. He's a right shot National League defenseman. When you're playing for the Edmonton Oilers and you have the two best players, arguably the, you know, the well, the best player and top five other player, you're under the microscope there. If you make mistakes, it gets blown up. Cody CC is still an NHL defenseman. He's going to go into San Jose and make them more competitive. I think it's a great trade for both teams. Uh, and then the Montreal Canadiens. Patrick Laine, uh, it's good to see that he got the help that he needed, right? I hope he's back in a good mental place. And if there's one guy that can get this guy going, Princey and Kyle, it's Marty St. Louis, man. I'm just, I'm worried about the media in Montreal. I'm worried about him coming in there. They, they don't care what he's been through, man. I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're relentless in Montreal. Like, I'm just worried about how he's going to deal with the media if he doesn't score because, Princey, that's a serious thing there, man. They will, they will not let him off the hook for anything. 
Yeah, I, I agree with these with what you're saying there with the Montreal media. He obviously was in Winnipeg, so he's played in the Canadian market, but it's not it's not Montreal. Like every Canadian market is hard. Uh, Montreal, Toronto, Edmonton. Now you know you're dealing with those guys in Edmonton, but if he's in the right headspace, he took the time off. Columbus wasn't a good spot for him. Let's let's be honest here. It just wasn't a good spot for him. He didn't gel with Tords. They've they've some had a, like some would, say, some would say Columbus is not a good spot for anyone. Some would say that. some would say that. No disrespect, Sean Monahan, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but okay, Monty, <laughs> that's good for Monty, right? Yeah, yeah, hey, that's good for him. Yeah, but uh, so if he's in the right headspace, you're absolutely right, Martin St. Louis. He he's been through a rotating cast of coaches in Columbus, so who knows what that that effect has had on him? He's got a better supporting cast. Like obviously, he's going to get put in the top six right away. He's got guys like Caulfield, Suzuki. Um, they've got Slavkovsky, a great young player, that kind of oh, stuff. That kid, I think going. that kid has a big year this year. Yeah. He has a big year. That kid's good. Big. Yeah, and they signed him to a good deal, really good deal. So, you know, it's it's a tough thing for Line A too because it's uh, – I don't think the Columbus Blue Jackets were willing to take on retaining any salary. You know, he's making $8.7 million. That's good for them to get that off the cap. So there's only a select full of teams that, that could actually take him on. It's only two years that you got to pay for him. Uh, they actually got a pick from it too. They got a second-round pick with it too. So – they gave up a good defenseman in, in Jordan Harris, but Montreal's got a plethora of defensemen. They've got good young defensemen that they they can will they can they can give that up. They need goal scorers. They need a sniper. I'm, I'm torn now. I got my boy Marty St. Louis coaching Montreal. I got my boy Travis Green coaching Ottawa. I, like I want to both get in. They're both not going to get in. Right, like, agents is everywhere. Who's better? Who's better, Ottawa or Montreal? Right now, who do you think, boys? I would say Ottawa, just based on the all mark move that they made. I think that was a big hole. Uh, in Ottawa's game was their goaltending. Corpus Salo wasn't the goalie that they expected he was going to be. Uh, Ottawa still has that good young core. Brady Kachuk, they've got good defensemen. Jake Sanderson is elevating every year. So I, I, I would say Ottawa, but I don't think Montreal's far behind. Like, I don't think Montreal's thinking we're not going to make the playoffs for the next five years. I think they're in that, you know, in the next couple years. We've got cap space. If we can, you know, hey, maybe we're at a good spot at Christmas time and we can try to add some guys. Who knows? So I'm going to say Ottawa, but not not far off. Yeah, I'm with Princey. It's got to be Ottawa. I mean, we, they got guys like Batherson and Norris and Pinto, like second, third liners who didn't do a lot last year, but just such high potential. And and they got fucking Brady Kachuk. Yeah, Kachuk and Stutzla on that first. It's just, I mean, yeah. they've got a nasty lineup, but I love, know, I love the Brady thing about Kachuk. line A is it could be low risk, high reward. I mean, he's what twenty six still, and it was a second round pick and like a a draft, like a defensive prospect for him. Like, if this works out with St. Louis, I mean, he could be the genius of the of the season. You know, he could have a sniper on his hands that could get upwards of forty goals. So I remember when we were talking about back in the day the liney Pierre Luc Dubois trade, right? I mean, it looks like nobody won that fucking well, trade. That I mean, that, no, that's just, that's a trade where both GMs probably should have lost their job over it. But to me, we forget about Patrick Liney boys. The way he can shoot the puck, like his release is is not something that you see even in the National League. I mean he has an elite elite shot. If he can get those boots going and 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 you know hopefully mentally he's back and Marty can get him going here. I like Kyle, you make a good point. It's a low risk play for the Montreal Canadiens. He's no longer what do you go second overall, Princey? Yeah, Matthews. Yeah. yeah, so it's no—he's no longer that guy. Like, there's not that expectations on him. He's been through a lot. It goes to show you, people never know what these hockey guys are dealing with. So cut these boys some slack at times. But I hope it works out for him. And then, last but not least, for around the National League, um, how do you say this goalie's name, Princey? Yaroslav Askarov. 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 Well, Saros getting signed scared him off. Yeah, but listen, Trotsy didn't need him. This is good. I mean, this kid's supposed to be good. I don't know. But I'll give Mike Greer credit where I'm heading with mm-hmm. this. Mike Greer, I'm looking at the San Jose Sharks right now. He's made him a more competitive hockey club. Um, you know, I don't think you're just going to go in there and you're going to steamroll him. They're obviously nowhere near making the playoffs, but I want to give Mike Greer some credit. I think he's made him more competitive. You bring in a Barkley Goudreau, uh, Delandria from, from um, Dallas, Tyler Toffoli, uh, and then on the back end, you bring in Cody CC to go along with Ruda. Mark Edward Vlasic still playing. How the fuck is that guy's body feeling? That guy's guaranteed. I guarantee he's got a cold tub at his house because that guy <laughs> has been blocking biscuits for years. He's got to be hurting, man. He, he might just want to go on long term IR and say, listen, Grizzy, just pay me. Bring up some young guy. I'm going to be in my house in San Jose drinking wine. I'll be in the cold tub if you need me because that guy's body's got to be just in one. But, oh, yeah. I listen, besides how awful their uniforms look here, these teal uniforms are just brutal. They're just god awful brutal. 
But listen, I want the San Jose Sharks to be back and get more competitive. Listen, I went in there and took a lot of minuses over my career. The Shark Tank was a terrible Hard. play to play. You got Joe Thornton involved. I think they're heading in the right direction. And, and obviously, Celebrini will see this kid to me. I've only watched the play World Juniors, but he was nasty. He looks like the real deal, so time will tell. But uh, back up the brakes, Chuck. Beep, 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 beep. Back her up here. I'm missing curfew. My boy Dan Bilesma is the head coach of Seattle Crack, and they signed Matty Benier, seven years, 49.9 bananas. Had a bad year last year. First thing I thought when I saw this, boys, is this one might age well, right? Yeah. In the, in the back end of this deal, when the cap continues to go up, TNT, ESPN keeps growing the game. This one might age well. I know he had a bad year last year, has all the tools. I think this is a good sign for the Kraken boys. And I think, like I said, you know, hopefully if we're still doing missing curfew in four or five years, we'll circle back and be like, this guy's a fucking bargain now. It's it's like Slavkovsky. It's exactly like Slavkovsky. They're kind of projecting what the player is going to be, you know, a little bit of what they've done in the past. You know, the cap is obviously going to go up. So if you do these Beneers and these Slavkovsky guys and they turn into 80, 90 point guys and you got them for 7 million and the cap's gone way up, then you can start surrounding them with better players. And we just saw this past offseason, our guy, Monty Kidd, fell up, Brandon Montour. That's yeah. a big, that's a big ad. And they're going to continue to add more guys because people are going to see that the Kraken are competitive. The Kraken have a cool arena. They're they're still kind of that hip, cool team. We've got Utah coming in, obviously. But uh, like, yeah, like you said, this is these these GMs are smart. And we talked about it when we were last on the podcast here about Quentin Byfield. Same thing, too. You're not just giving this guy, you know, 10 million or whatever. You're kind of just projecting. We're giving him this kind of these, you know, these smaller deals i mean granted this one's a seven-year deal but you're not overpaying oh, you're right I, you're, you're absolutely right byfield's deal was what five years yeah six yeah, and, and a half cool. i mean this deal is it's a good deal for him he's set for life and it's a good deal for seattle because like i said i do believe near the end it will be a bargain for this cocky club and you're right everything you said about seattle's bang on princey and, and i've tried to get behind him johnny forsley calls an unbelievable game him oh, and Eddie O. I watch a lot of kraken's games yeah I me too I'm on board i'm on board Dan mm-hmm. Bilesma. Monty Kidfella, I'm on board. I'm cheering for him. I'm pulling for him. I think they're going to be a playoff team again if Grubauer can find his game back between yeah. the pipe. Stevenson, some other guys they brought in. They spent the dough. Better uh, coaching. Better coaching. Disco Dan Bilesma is an absolute beauty. You know, when I first saw this Benier signing, I, as a Hurricanes fan, I kind of was like, oh, shit, we're going to have to pay Seth Jarvis this exact same amount. But I, I think you're right. I think this is going to age very well for Seattle. And just looking at their lineup, adding Chandler Stevenson to that lineup, and they got Shane Wright down the fourth line. Like they're gonna have a solid team this year. I mean, it's really fun to watch. Is Shane Wright still? Is he still playing hockey or what? Is he still? Is he well, still, he's out in Coachella. What, is he, still, he had a good playoff. He had a good playoff. Apparently, he had a good playoff. Did he? Yeah. And they went to the final two. That's like, overall, he should be having a good playoff in the jungle. He if should be. Overall, he should have a good playoff in the jungle, yeah. Prince. Yeah, Bilesma whipped him into shape in Coachella. You know, hopefully he kind of changes attitude. Yeah, that's true. That will help him if if, if he he's been playing for Disco the last couple of years. That's a great point by Kyle. Kyle, as a Hurricanes fan, what the hell are you thinking, bro? How are you feeling? I'm uh, I'm, I'm not touching them this year. They broke no, my heart. They broke my heart too many times. I'm off them. The, these last two seasons, we we blew it. This was it. Last year was it. I mean, I don't. It, it's it's frustrating. They didn't do much and. We have this new GM who's like a guru, I guess, and in yeah. all these numbers games and stuff. And but I didn't see I didn't see him do much that was going to help us out. So I saw I saw Martin Nook at Richardson's wedding. Guy's a fucking beauty, by the way. It Nickelback. It, it got he loves Nickelback. It got close to him leaving. I was like, how close was it? He yeah. said, it was fucking close. But yeah. then Rod the Rod the Bod stepped in and said, this guy, you can't let a guy like that leave. Down. So I mean, that's their princey. That's the woo guy. Yeah, yeah. There you, go. you know what I mean. Like he he's a total glue guy. Jarvis and all those young guys love Martin Oak. They joke around. They have such good, you know, he, he's a guy that we, if he was going to leave, I mean, they were no playoffs maybe. Like, yeah. It's just the thing. The problem is, is we, we rely on, on Aho and Sveshnikov just a little, you know, we need, we need a sniper. Losing Gensel, he was setting up Aho the, the whole playoff. Like, we need that one more guy. We just need one more guy. But, no, you're absolutely right. They just, even in the playoffs, like, that game six against the Rangers, they had so many opportunities to make it, you know, a two goal game, a three goal game. They just couldn't bury it. Listen, I hope they prove me wrong. I love Rod the Bod. They got great fans, but I will not be putting any of my Sazich on the Hurricanes. I've learned my fucking lesson. Princey, I don't know who this kid is. Maybe I should, but I, I don't know who this guy is. Who is this guy? Uh, Ruger McGrory. 
yeah, from the from Michigan there. Yeah, we can touch on right. Yeah, we can touch on this a little bit, and it's just more about I want your opinion on. It's just another example of a guy, you know, we like Cutter Gauthier style, who never played one game with the team and demanded a trade. You know, he cited he put the jersey on and it just didn't feel right. So I think we're just in this day and age now where these guys have a lot of power and they can do it. So, I mean, it is what it is. I don't blame the guy for doing it. He has to go to Pittsburgh and, and play with Crosby. Uh, Winnipeg actually, Winnipeg did well. They got a guy, Braden Yeager from Moose Jaw. He's a, Sask- he's a Saskatoon I kid. I can read the card right. Moose Jaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moose Jaw, actually. Yeah, they're, they're, good. they're a good squad. So, again, Obes, it's just it's an example of a college kid that has power because he's put up points in college he's played for the u.s you know the the united states program world juniors that kind of stuff so we're good this isn't the last time you're going to see this Uh, it's a slippery slope right once one guy does it goes Mm -hmm. to hey goche did that adam fox was the first guy to really do that i think i don't want to go to winnipeg okay okay i mean i've always been you know if, if if you're a gm or if i was a gm besides my nfl fantasy football team i want guys that want to be there if you don't want to be there I don't mm-hmm. care how much skill you have. I don't want you. I want yeah. guys that want to be there, want to compete. Because I tell you, boys, if you got guys in your dressing that don't want to be there, I don't care how much skill you have. You're never going to win. That, that's a goddamn truth in your NHL dressing room. You got to have guys in there. So good on Kevin. Kevin Shovel Day off. You don't want to yep. be here, you rookie puke. Get the fuck on. We'll, we'll move on with life after you. So, but hey, yo, Kyle's buddies are saying this kid's going to go on and play with Crosby and win the fucking Calder. So listen, we need to. We don't need to do it now, but let's get his odds. Yeah, the Calder and see what they are next week. Because if he's playing with Crosby, I mean, he, he, yeah. might, win. he might win. You never game. know. Yeah, you never know. Uh, we got some UFAs out there. We talked about it earlier. Guys that are out there waiting for their phone to ring. I know the feeling, boys. Listen, Nick Cousins. He just won a Stanley Cup. Yeah, I have fucking contract. Would you? Somebody sign him. I, the Ducks. Hey, Somebody, yeah. Pat for Beak. Call Nick Cousins. Overpay him and get him out here. Well, um, out here, that'd be perfect for us. Tyson Berry, Tony D'Angelo, Schultz, and Clutterbuck are all guys that jump out to me. Most of them are defensemen, right-handed shooting defensemen. I'm not telling GMs anything they don't know. You can never have enough of those guys. Exactly. You can never have enough right-handed D-man that can move the puck and play the power play. And So I'm sure Barry, D'Angelo, and Schultz will all be signed. And as much as I wanted to kill this fucker when I play with him, Cal Clutterbuck, if you're a oh, team yeah. that's that's trying to win a Stanley Cup, and you need some more sandpaper, come on, man. Get out there. I, I'm sure you know, Clutterbuck would take a little less because he's made a lot of money. He might I heard uh, I heard, I heard our, our, our guy Brad Tree Living kind of had him circled a little bit, so that might be yeah, something the Leafs look at as a PTO, you know? Fuck the um, find this whole list. Yeah, <laughs> Ducks should find that. I know, that could also line up. Yeah. That, that, that old team would make them better. You're not fucking lying about that, brother. The, hey, those new orange jerseys you got, we got some guys that want to rock for you. But uh, Princey, what a what a transition, buddy. Look, you, you get bumped up to the first line. You bring you, you say Brad Tree living. You yeah. can, this should be right into the Toronto Maple Leafs, dude. Austin Matthews. Sorry, fellas. I know this is old news, but Austin Matthews is the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Listen, I love Austin Matthews, man. He's nasty. Nasty. I love Brad Tree Living. I get you want to shake it up, Brad. To me, this is what I would have done. I would have stripped Tavares of the captaincy this year, and I would have just kept them with all A's. I wouldn't have got a new okay. captain. I would have let John Tavares play out his contract, say, hey, listen, you guys are all going to be leaders. We're in this together. No captain this year. And then you make Austin Matthews the captain. And the reason I say this is John Tavares said all the right things at the press conference. He even had his kids wearing Austin Matthews jersey, which I thought was a classy, classy touch. I don't care what anyone says. He still walks in that dressing room, and now he's no longer the captain, and Austin's the captain. I don't know. I just, for me, for a guy who who always wanted our locker room to be as tight as it possibly can, I just think if you take the C away from this year, you make everyone alternate captains, and the next year after Tavares leaves or whatever, you make Matthews captain. It's 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 a win-win either way. I think Austin Matthews is going to be a great captain, Princey. To me, I would have let Tavares' contract expire and then named him captain. But who knows? Maybe they resigned yeah. Tavares, so maybe it wouldn't have worked that way. That's what Brad was thinking. Yeah. Me, my two senses, just no captain this year. And also, let Craig Berube get a feel for the room. Right. Well, maybe Chris Tanev comes in and is on the old. I'm just, I'm just using the scenario here. I'm not saying Austin Matthews should be the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He fucking should be. But maybe Berube says, hey, I want Tanev to be the captain for a couple of years. Matthews isn't quite ready yet. Or, or who knows? I just think 
with a new coach, you didn't have to name a captain right now, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a fair take. I mean we we don't see it a whole lot. You know, there was that that era back in back in our our favorite era there where the the Sharks took away the captaincy from Thornton and Marlowe, and then everyone was assistants there. Yeah. Didn't look very good on them. I don't. It's it's a different kind of situation. Uh, knowing Bradtree Living as as a Flames fan, I know Bradtree Living very well. You're probably right on that aspect where I think Brad's probably going to try to. It's just my take. He's probably going to try to keep Tavares and uh, keep him at a lower level deal. We know, we know, Brad. Get, we know yeah, you, you get John Tavares at four million bucks. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Huh? yeah. So maybe, so maybe that's maybe that's what Brad's thinking long term. Like, yeah. I'm going to resign Tavares no matter what. So maybe I do it now. Yeah, I just think like with all the turnover with the new coach, like do, you know, do you need to throw the captaincy on Matthews right now? I mean, I like what. You know, what's the hurry, I guess? I almost wonder saying. who, like, internally made that decision, you know? Was it? Would have been collectively, I think. Yeah, it would have been collectively. And, and listen, I like I said, I, I like Brad shaking it up. They obviously haven't had the playoff success. I'm just thinking if you want to strip Tavares of the captaincy, do you just do you give it a year this year of where, hey, let's just, we're going to have five or whatever alternating captains. Everyone's going to be a leader. And then we're going to name a captain next year. I, I just like to strip them. And then give it to Austin. I, I don't know. To me, I was like, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But you're probably right, Princey. I would bring John Tavares back if I was tree at you know three and a half, four million dollars all day yeah. long. Yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's interesting because you know captaincy can be kind of used as leverage a little bit. Obviously, they signed Austin Matthews already. Not a. You know, it wasn't an eight year deal, but they got him till 2028. So yeah. you know maybe that's some incentive to try no, to keep him further beyond that. And I don't know Austin Matthews. Yeah. I'm just going by the way he plays and how hard he plays and that he yeah. already tried his extension. He loves Toronto. Now, you're going to sell a lot more jerseys because everyone's got to go out there and buy a Matthews jersey with the captain on it, so that's going to help the revenue yeah. of the Leafs because everyone has a Matthews jersey in that arena to begin with. So now they all got to get a new one. Yeah. Unless they go old school and just put the tape on there. Hey, remember road <laughs> hockey? Just put the tape on there. <laughs> we do that in your league still. Hey, Prince, you're captain today, buddy. <laughs> hey, don't put that C on. Yeah. I just thought, like, I, listen, they're obviously in a transition period. I get it. You take it away from Tavares. Let's all just let's all just take a breather. All right. John is no longer our captain. Let's just chill. Let's focus on, you know, l- learning the new, you know, Craig Berube systems and let's all get our new guys acquainted. And, you know, let's all do this collectively. Let's not just all put it on Austin right away. Like, like he needs another thing on his plate right now, right? I mean, yeah. he's, got, he's he's got to score 70 goals for them to get in the playoffs. Like yeah. I, I just thought they could have taken a breather, chill. But listen, I love this kid's game. I think he's going to be a great captain. I'm just worried about the dressing room, and time will tell on that. And speaking of captains, my boy Gabriel Landis Cog, who right now the Colorado Avalanche on DraftKings are plus 1,300 to win the mug, plus 650 to win the Western Conference. I got to wait and see how my boy Landy's doing before. Uh, and obviously, Princey made a great point. Big Val, I hope he's, he's getting the help he deserves. I think he's suspended till November. Right? New Year, right? I thought it was like, Maybe December. Yeah. It's definitely before the four yeah. four nations yeah, yeah. win. Well, it'll be a nice little Christmas present for the team. Yeah. Back. Listen, if they get Landis Cog back healthy and Big Val, look out Edmonton because these guys are right there again. Um, listen, I I I I was doing some sniffing around in, in Denver and he's skating. He played the team golf tournament, uh, which is a good sign to me, right? If you're playing golf with yeah. the boys, uh everybody in Denver doesn't think he's gonna start the season. Uh, but God, I hope he's back. I-, I love that kid. They're so much better with them. The game's better with Landy. So Landy, good to see you on the ice, buddy. And uh, let's hope you know, let's hope he gets back sooner than later, eh, boys? DraftKings, baby, presented by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours, Bala. All right, boys, we got some early season. She's real early. Fuck, the boys aren't even there yet. They're just maybe getting into town, checking out the new place, got to buy a new couch, maybe a new mattress. Hey, new mattress this year, boys. Last year, the one got a lot of work. Last year, got a lot of work. You know, a couple stains in there. We need a new mattress. But anyways, uh, Edmonton Oilers are the favorite at plus 800. I will put some seats on that. The Panthers at a plus 1,000. I'm interested to see the start the Florida Panthers are going to have. Yeah. Right? Like, we lost some defense stuff. So summer of Chucky. Yeah. The summer of Chucky, I mean, I don't know if they're going to get off to a great start. Time will tell. But listen, the team for me that I wanted to touch on here early was out east. And Princey makes a great point here. They don't have Swayman signed yet. And you can't believe everything you hear on the internet. Or, in fact, you can't believe anything you hear on the internet. 
Someone told me once ten million dollars a year. That seems like that too, yeah. fucking high. But right now, the Boston Bruins at plus nine hundred. If they can get Swayman, listen, I like what they did. I don't love Elias Lindholm, but he makes them better yeah. down the middle. They they needed it. Do I think he's a top line center? Princey may disagree with me because he was in Calgary. No, I agree with you, Oops. I do. I will tell. But if you're playing with Pasternak, good things are going to happen. And then when I look at their back end, Zadorov, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo. Um, the big man number six and Peaky, that's a big yeah. fucking decor, man. That that come playoff time, yeah. you know. I, I don't know. I like this. I like this Boston Bruins team. I think at plus nine hundred, it's a good value bet. Uh, I think they're going to be good, Princey and Kyle. I really do. I, I'm going to put some Sazich on them to win the East. I think. Yeah, that's a good bet. That's a good bet. And you know, you're seeing the rumors out there. Swayman wants ten million, whatever. I'm sure. I'm sure that there's some truth to that. I don't think Swayman's going anywhere. So you know that he's going to be their goalie. Like you said, we got to watch Big Z, Nikita Zadorov in the playoffs. We got to see him live in Vancouver. No longer Big Z, dude. He said, don't call Oh, yeah. Oh, Big yeah. Z. Come on, yeah, and he's, oh, yeah. And he he's a he's a lurker in the comments on missing curfew. He's going to find me through the block. I feel. Oh, then, God, yeah. I'm just saying he was a flame, so he called Big Z. But I, we still I, love, I love that he said that, too, when he went in there and signed on day one. He's like, I'm no longer Big Z. Yeah. Just respect. 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 But, no, that's he's a Boston Brewers, Bruins type player. We got Max Jones in Boston too. Yes, good. Yeah, point. Wow. good point. Yeah, very good. Could be a great fourth liner there. Yeah. I just like their size. I like that they got Lindholm down the pipe. They'll get Swayman signed. I, I, and I think they got a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, you know, Florida kind of bitch slapped them around a little bit, knocked out Marshawn. I think they're like, hey, fuck it, we're just as good as anyone else. And I, and and by the way, I, I love watching their games. I love that rink atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're unbelievable. They're an easy team, easy team to cheer for. So. Yeah. I'm going to put my Sazich on that. We will see how it plays through, but that was DraftKings, baby. It is time for Get This Guy a Beer, presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so we can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. I'm going to start it off here, lads. Pat McAfee. Shout out to fucking Pat McAfee. Listen, I, the other day, boys, I was watching him on ESPN, and it was the first two hours were over, and he's like, hey, uh, switch over to YouTube to, to watch us for our last third hour. And I've never watched them on their YouTube channel. I'll tell you what, they they, they make Mr. Curfew seem like a, <laughs> a, a, church, a church choir or, or a church <laughs> class or whatever. They are absolute beauties. When Pat McAfee was just absolutely gunned, gunned in a Dublin pub with his shirt off, doing his show on ESPN, Princey. Get that guy Labatt Blue, oh, man. Yeah. I love Pat McAfee. Yeah, that was that was cool to see, and uh, we got to listen on here too. Like I like I like Pat McAfee. I watch a lot of his shows too, but uh, I'm still like the franchise. I still keep my tabs on the the World Wrestling Entertainment, World Wrestling Federation, and the big fella Sheamus, the Irish wrestler, was with him there too, and they were just pounding beers, ripping wow. their shirts off. You know, that's kind of cool, man. Like, it's uh, it, it draws in two different kind of fan bases. And we know, man, we do these live shows. We went to Detroit last year. We went to Vancouver, all this kind of stuff. You know, people were kind of ripping McAfee while well, he's drinking too much. They can, hey, fellas, they can get away from you. These shows can get away from you. We were at the DraftKings Sportsbook Bar in yeah. Detroit. Guys are just bringing us drinks. And, you know, it, it just it kind of gets away from you. And the next thing you know, you got a mic in your hand. So what, what are you supposed to do? But at the end of the day, that's what the fans want. That's who we are. That's what the fans want. Enough of this reading from a script and listing off stats and stuff like that. I, th- I just thought it was cool to see. I agree. It was unbelievable. And if you don't like Pat McAfee, well, if you listen to Mr. Kerfield, you'll, you'll like Pat Oh, McAfee. yeah. But none of the fellows will, will disagree with that. Uh, next, Doug Armstrong. Get this guy, Labatt Blue, for this quote exactly. <laughs> if my mother was the GM of the Oilers, I still would have sent that offer sheet. <laughs> I mean, Army, God bless you, fella. It's a business. He said he's out to get the St. Louis Blues to make them as best as they are. Army, I always knew you were a beauty. This is a beauty fucking comment or a quote. Get him a lap, the bat blue. And last but not least, a member of the DraftKings family, Captain America, Keegan Bradley wins the BMW. Boys, he got in with the very last spot, 50th, after the first playoff series in Memphis. Boom, he wins it. He is now, I believe, fourth heading into the Tour Championship. He had DraftKings right on his sleeve. I don't know if he's a big drinker or not, but Keegan, get yourself a Labatt Blue, buddy. It was unbelievable. Um, Castle Pines, that course just outside of Denver, looks unbelievable too. But Keegan, good on him. Get yourself a Labatt Blue, fella. 
Yeah, it's cool to see Keegan, especially with uh, multiple appearances on Missing Curfew. When, when guys like us pay attention to golf, we had, we gravitate towards guys. So it's really cool to see Keegan Bradley do that kind of stuff. You know, and I don't think we did cover it. Uh, it was happened throughout the summer, but him being named the next Ryder Cup captain, yeah. like that's unbelievable. He's, yeah. He deserves that so much, especially what happened to him last time. It's awesome to see. We're always going to have your back, Keegan. You're going to see clips of him all the time. So shout out to Keegan. Look forward to watching him this year. It's going to be fun. Yeah, and we got the President's Cup coming up the end of September, boys. So Mike Weir's the captain. I'm sure he'll pick as many Canadian lads as he's can. That Royal Montreal, <laughs> yeah. um, that'll be fun to watch. So yeah, well said by you. Keegan is a good dude. He's been good to miss in curfew. He's part of the DraftKings family. So good luck to him this week in the Tour Championship. Princey, Kyle, great job, boys. Been to fucking jump in and find the open ice, make a play, head up, eh? Uh, I appreciate it, boys. Morgan, thank you, Hall Pass Media. We're back, baby. That was missing curfew. Fella.